Member for Meshkigawak, James Bay. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have the honor today to talk about the worry of people in Meshkigawak and May James. The residents in us who are work, frontline workers and uh, they belong to the uh, health family team be beginning uh, of the pa pandemic. But there was no uh, child care for their children due to the orders from the Ministry of Health. And so the other uh, child care cannot serve, uh, is not open this summer, and the other one has its own uh, clientele. We cannot ensure the security of children workers, but they face the number of children by room when they open and the ch buying personal protection equipment without clear directives from the government. Mr. Speaker, the residents of Meshkigo and Bay James, James Bay, are very rec uh, recognize the work. It's now the time of the Minister of Education to do his part and to invest directly in our child care to in, uh, ensure that workers such as Madame Rodrigue can continue helping our people. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Sarnia Lambton. Thank you, Speaker. I'm pleased to rise in the legislature today to share an, share an important milestone from my community of Sarnia Lambton. After three very challenging months, as of 9:30 a.m. yesterday, Blue Water Health in Sarnia Lambton has zero cases of confirmed COVID-19 patients in acute care. This is the first time this has happened since the onset of the community's first hospitalization due to the virus on March 21st, 2020. Of course, we must recognize that this virus is still in our community, and we must remain vigilant in our efforts to follow public health guidelines, but this does mark a milestone for Sarnia Lambton. I want to take this opportunity to thank all the dedicated frontline workers across Lambton County for their commitment to our community. The collective efforts to control the spread of the virus by the people of Sarnia Lambton are starting to pay off, Mr. Speaker. On Friday, our community will proceed to phase two of the provincial reopening plan. I'm excited for those businesses in our community that will be opening, reopening after so many weeks of sacrifice. And I'm encouraging everyone in Sarnia Lambton to once again join together and support the many local businesses that have struggled through these challenging times by committing to shop local. Together, Mr. Speaker, we can control the spread of this deadly virus and quickly help to build back our important small business community. Stay safe. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Windsor to come see. Speaker, Ontario welcomes about 20,000 temporary foreign workers each and every year. That's more or less the entire population of Niagara-on-the-Lake, or Amherstburg, or Collingwood, or Essex, Huntsville, or Tecumseh. Generally speaking, they live in open-concept bunkhouses, or too many of them are squeezed into a crowded home with little privacy. This pandemic has hit these workers hard. The Globe and Mail claims 600 migrant workers have already tested positive for COVID-19 in Ontario. Speaker, in my area, two young men from Mexico have died. They were 24 and 31 years old. Canada is failing our temporary foreign workers, and Ontario is failing our migrant workers as well. They come here because Canadians don't want to do the work. They put in 60 hours a week or more to support their families back home. If they call in sick, they don't get paid, and that's a problem. Speaker, these are essential workers. But because of their circumstances, they are also treated as expendable and exploitable. Their wages should be protected if they catch COVID-19. We need a wage subsidy for our migrant workers. Good things grow in Ontario, and we need migrant workers to get local farm-fresh fruits and vegetables to our kitchens and tables. We can do better. We must do better for these essential workers. Member Statements. The member for Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Bursala is a small village in rural Somalia. It's, hope, it's home to the Somali Hope Academy Primary and Secondary Education School. You might not know this, but the Somali Hope Academy in rural Somalia has a very unique and special relationship with Canada. The school was built and funded by the Somali Hope Foundation, a Canadian-led initiative. 
Somali Hope Academy's development was a dream of Sergeant Mohamud Elmi, an Ottawa resident and sergeant of the Ottawa Police Service, who in his youth fled the civil war in Somalia. As a Somali Canadian, Sergeant Elmi works tirelessly to build relationships and make a difference in the Ottawa community. However, he always wanted to make a difference in the country of his birth, a country that has continually suffered immeasurably over the past 30 years. His dream was to contribute to a brighter future for the children of Somalia, and education was a key part of his plan. He envisioned a world in which all Somali children, boys and girls, can pursue free, quality education. This is a very special year for us as we celebrate our 10-year anniversary. Fundraising began in 2008, supported by Human Concern International, the Somali community, the Ottawa community, the Ottawa Police Service, and the Lerner family. Since the, Hope, uh, since the Somali Hope Academy is run entirely by volunteers, 100% of all money raised goes directly to the school. In 2012, Sergeant Mo Elmi's dream of providing free education to underprivileged youth in rural Somalia finally became a reality. This year, we had to cancel our gala because of COVID-19, but uh, we will be doing a virtual gala, and I encourage everyone to go to somalihopeacademy.ca to find out more. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for St. Catharines. Thank you, Speaker. My office has logged 112 different times that nurses have reached out to me during this pandemic. These are the same frontline workers that the Premier calls heroes. In fact, under normal circumstances, I would have invited them here, and they would have come, and they would have sat right over there. Everyone would have clapped and given them a hero's welcome to this assembly, except there is a big difference to how I see them as heroes and how this government does. They are heroes during your press conferences and on your social media posts, but when they need something, they are met with silence. You know, a single nurse, not, you know, not a single nurse in the NHS has received the pandemic pay yet. And when one of our Niagara Regional Hospitals had an outbreak for a few weeks back, one nurse called in to say that the province loosey-goosey guidelines in PPE left them in total chaos. Last week, the government had to answer a question on their legislation capping nurses' pay. In February, in Richmond Hill, this meant that this government took back 19 cents an hour from the nurses that worked there. 19 cents. Nurses are heroes, for sure. But so long as you don't ask when you are getting paid or for more protective equipment, so long as you come cheap, these men and women and their response to the pandemic brought our province back. And I am tired of seeing them being called heroes, then being treated in a way that does not befit a hero. It is not good enough that nurses are heroes only when they are quiet and come cheap. Nurses and all frontline heroes deserve better from this government. Member statements, the member for Ottawa, Vanier. Merci, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have a great pleasure to speak today in the House. It's a coincidence. It's the day of my birthday. It's my birthday and my first uh, member statements, and I want to share some good news. Mr. Speaker, the well-being of uh, seniors is a major worry everywhere in Ontario. I visited many of my constituents before my election, and I, sp I checked with them during the pandemic. There is Montfort Renaissance, an organization which is a bilingual centre that offers services to help seniors in their home and also in the residence and day services. It's exceptional with Montfort Renaissance. It seems that that residence uh, that didn't, uh, was not taken by surprise by the pandemic. In fact, Montfort Renaissance had already in place a pandemic place. Employees had been trained on best practices and the crisis plan that was put in place right away. Uh, COVID-19, the number of cases there is zero, none amongst residents. This res uh, organization uh, supports directly the healthcare system and takes care of our uh, loved ones with dignity and respect. And so I have a great pleasure to congratulate them publicly for their success. We know that we have to think uh, the, uh, about uh, services given to our uh, relatives that need, uh, need services. So we have to have enough funding and actually exchange to follow the leadership that Ontarians 
should get from the government. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member for Willowdale. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. June is Filipino Heritage Month, and uh, this morning I want to recognize the over 280,000 Filipinos in Ontario, many of whom call my riding of Willowdale home. Filipinos began immigrating to Canada in the 1930s, and over the past nearly 100 years have made a great contribution to our country and our province. Over the last few years, I've gotten to know many in the Filipino community. They are some of the warmest, most welcoming, hardest working, kindest people I have ever met, and they are fiercely proud of their heritage and culture, and have shared their wonderful, uh, wonderfully colourful language, mouth-watering cuisine, and the values of serving their community and the importance of family in our province. In 2017, I was honoured to join the ranks of the Order of the Knights of Rizal, an international order created to honour and uphold the ideals of Philippines national hero Dr. Jose Rizal. As Sir Stan, I have enjoyed many special occasions celebrating with my friends in the Filipino community who never hesitate to invite me into their homes to enjoy great food and to learn about their spirited culture. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, this year, celebrating Philippines Independence Day on June 12th and all that the month usually has to offer wasn't possible. But I wish all my friends in the Filipino community and across Canada happy Filipino Heritage Month. I look forward to seeing you again in person and enjoying my favorite summer treat, Halo Halo. Salamat po. Member Statements, the member for Sudbury. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, Melody Hughes from my riding of Sudbury has been raising alarms about issues in long-term care for years. After her family had a devastating experience in 2015, Melody tells me that her mother, Caroline Hughes, was sexually assaulted. She was at Mackenzie Place long-term care home at Rivera Living Managed Facility in Newmarket, and Melody says the investigation into her mother's sexual assault left her with zero closure. She still has no answers, feels that the home was never held accountable. In 2018, Melody spoke with the Premier about the urgent need to fix long-term care. The Premier told her speaker that he was committed to improving care for seniors in this province, but after reading the Canadian Armed Forces report on long-term care, Melody believes that Ontario is moving backwards. Reading the CAF report sent Melody right back to the moment when she learned her mother had been assaulted. Speaker, we need a long-term care judicial find-and-fix inquiry that will compel this government to fix the problems in care that everyone knows has existed for far too long. No one should have to go through what Carol Ann experienced. No senior should have to experience the appalling conditions in her long-term care homes. Melody is calling on us to take action. Speaker, will this government listen to Melody and the millions of Ontarians calling for a find and fix inquiry? Thank you. Member for Oakville. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And today I, uh, I'm, I'm honoured to stand here in the legislature to acknowledge recipients in my Oakville riding of important financial grants from the Trillium Foundation and sincerely appreciate their recognition from the Minister of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Culture Industries. There are four recipients of the grants. The first is Acclaim Health, which is a registered charity that has been operating for 85 years with programs that support physical and mental well-being through independent living, social, reduced social isolation, dementia care and end-of-life care. Their GROW grant will help reduce social isolation for caregivers of people living with dementia in the Halton region. The next organization is the YMCA of Oakville, which has been operating in the community since 1956. The YMCA of Oakville has played a role in improving the quality of life for thousands of people in Oakville. Their seed grant is provided for them to pilot a free 12-week group fitness and peer support program for young people aged 13 to 18 who are struggling with their mental health. Another recipient is Home Sweet Hope whose aim is to break the cycle of poverty for single parents and their children. Their seed grant helps them scale up the Homeward Bound program to help young single mothers find careers. And finally, the Halton Environmental Network, who has been working to support and enhancing the capacity for local climate action and environment sustainability across our community. Congratulations to all these great organizations for their grant, and thank you for making a positive difference in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Milton. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in recognition of a former Liberal member of Provincial Parliament, Walt Elliott. Mr. Elliott peacefully passed away on June 4th at the age of 87. 
He and his beloved wife, Anne, recently celebrated their 60 years of marriage. Walt Elliott faithfully represented the former riding of Halton North from 1987 to 1990. Before entering into politics, Mr. Elliott worked in his community as a school teacher and later as a principal. He was actively involved in fundraising for many community organizations, including, but not limited to, the United Way Children's Aid Society, Ontario Agriculture Museum, Halton Region Museum and McMaster University. During his time in this house, under Premier Peterson, he served as the parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Housing. On behalf of all of my colleagues in this house, I want to pass our most sincere condolences to the Elliott family and the way we can all strive to serve our community as honorably as Mr. Elliott. Mr. Speaker, thank you. Thank you. That concludes our member statements for this morning.